Well, over the last four months as a, since I was appointed as a European Commissioner on Agriculture and Rural Development, I've been very busy trying to put food security as a central part of all of our policy, uh, but also looking at how we are implementing the uh, most recent common agricultural policy reforms which came into effect on the 1st of January 2015. And uh, we're looking at how we can simplify the, po the policy from the point of view of the producer and the food industry. And we are working as well on completing some legislative work on organics uh, and evaluating our school schemes on fruit and veg and milk. So it's keeping us quite busy. Yes, I think, I think all member states would like to see uh, you know, a deal, but a comprehensive deal across all of the various uh, aspects of trade in relation to the United States and the European Union. Obviously agriculture is a quite a difficult and sensitive area at the moment in relation to the trade deal with the United States. Uh, but we are anxious to eliminate, in the first instance, all of the SPS, sanitary and phytosanitary, uh, blockages to trade between the EU and the United States. Uh, and in my talks last week, I think that we are a long ways apart at the moment. Uh, but hopefully by 2016 we'll be able to close the gap uh, and that the uh, United States will be able to make some proposals uh, that will help to kick start or give a fresh start to those particular negotiations. Well I think that one of the most important areas is the retention of food quality uh, standards in the European Union and uh, I think the United States understand that and I think we can work together towards uh, you know, harmonizing the rules a bit better uh, in dealing with the, the, the blockages that are there at the moment in terms of sanitary and phytosanitary issues and that the European producers and the European consumers uh, demand high quality, they demand sustainable means of production and processing and these are the type of uh, principles that we'd like to see enshrined in any agreement that we do in any part of the world uh, and that includes any future deal that we might do with the United States. Well, it's quite regrettable that Pres uh, Mr. Putin has decided to engage in this very difficult uh, political intervention into Ukraine. Uh, the European Union must respond to this sort of aggressive mood and move. Uh, and, uh, you know, but unfortunately, two-thirds of the responsibility for uh, and consequences arising from this political action by Mr. Putin is the ban of agricultural products from the European Union. And I have brought in, uh, and my predecessor, Mr. Cholas, brought in four measures to deal with fruit and vegetables and to give some compensation uh, to the producers in relation to this area and I have extended the program uh, to the end of June 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, equally I have targeted some measures for member states in the Baltic region uh, and Finland in relation to milk producers where 25% of their uh, agricultural production in the dairy sector was reduced arising from the Russian ban. So we have a mixture of uh, market measures and targeted income support in order to deal in the short term uh, with these particular financial difficulties that have arisen due to the Russian ban. 350 million euro has been spent to date in helping farmers to cope with this particular political problem uh, without having to resort to the crisis of reserve which is a, a fund that has been set up by farmers themselves for market volatility in, in the future. So we have maintained a, a very good position on the budget uh, and hopefully we won't have to use as much in the future but that's up to Mr. Putin to make the political decision to withdraw from his aggressive stance in the Ukraine. Yes, I think we can do a lot more in communicating better with our urban population about the value of food security, food quality uh, and the importance of the interrelationship between rural and urban society. And I am looking at measures that I can take in order to allow member states the opportunity to promote the food industry in all its facets uh, in a more concerted way to show the urban population that food doesn't appear on the table in terms of good quality by accident. It takes a lot of production and processing and money uh, to do so uh, and uh, we should not take our good food values and a good food uh, quality issues that are important to consumers for granted. So I think that uh, food security is an issue not just for rural people but for feeding the populations of Europe and the world and that of course includes the potential of 9.6 billion people on the planet by 2050, uh, by 2050 and they have to be fed and Europe is well placed in order to do that. This is a very, GMO and biotechnology is a very difficult and political sensitive issue. The consumers of Europe, uh, you know, they seem reluctant 
in many member states to embrace biotechnology. And the European Commission is going to uh, review its policy in, 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 in 2015. I expect that we will have a discussion very shortly to see what direction we wish to go. As you know, recently the Council of Ministers uh, in the EU and the European Parliament have agreed new legislation to allow member states to opt in and for cultivation arising from GMOs. So, uh, you know, Spain is one of the member states that has, uh, you know, s some cultivation of land uh, authorised for the purposes of GMO technology. Uh, so it will be interesting to see will other member states follow on. But we, we are anxious to give certainty in relation to our policy uh, in the first half of 2015. Well, we have, we have, you know, over the years we have had an incremental approach towards various regulations that have been put in place in the food industry and indeed in any reform of the CAP. So I want to look at what measures we can actually uh, change to reduce the administrative burden for the beneficiary as well as for the food industry. And I'm working closely with member states for their ideas. I'm working closely with the food industry and the farm organisations to see what practical, common sense way in which we can actually reduce the burden on them and uh, at the same time maintain the sound financial management of the CAP and maintain its policy. All of the citizens of Europe want to see good environmental practice. The new markets in the Far East are demanding that we have environmental sustainability at the heart of production methods and processing systems uh, and therefore it would be very short-sighted of farmers if they did not uh, take on board the concerns of the marketplace in relation to the environment and that is why in the new common agricultural policy we have an, inv an uh, you know we have payments being made to farmers for the purpose of good environmental practice and uh, it is very important that we have good soil fertility we have good water resource cons and water conservation measures uh, so that all of the producers in the long term should be thinking in terms of what we have to do to protect those natural resources for the new generations of farmers that will insist and expect uh, all of the, the good farming practice to be able to allow them to have a good future in farming as a career uh, as young people. So it is essential from the point of view of society at large that the taxpayers money is actually spent well and that the environment is protected at the same time as good production opportunities are given to the rural communities. Well, I have said in the European Parliament and in, the, and in various statements that I'm very concerned about the fact that the retailers and processors are squeezing the profit margins of the producer. And we are looking at this very inten intensively. And I'm learning from the experience of the Spanish model and the United Kingdom model in relation to how they are dealing with the balance in the food chain. The Spanish proposals that are being implemented are a good first step, uh, but we will see how they are being implemented and we'll see the consequences uh, over a period of time about how they impact on certainly improving the uh, prices and the profit margins for producers. If we don't have producers, we won't have products and that's very important for retailers, as, uh, retailers and processors, processors to understand that. But I'm very impressed with the level of organisation of the cooperative movement and I'm very impressed also with the modernised uh, plant that I very much uh, appreciate is doing so much for food quality and food safety and re responding very well to what the consumer requires. We're going to a lot of trouble in terms of good quality in order to achieve that. So I think that this is a good example of what we need to do uh, right across the European Union uh, with the financial support that we give to the food sector in order to ensure that we have a satisfied customer at the end of the day in terms of the good quality food we, we produce. Yes, I think we can produce more with less. We, once we respect the environmental constraints that we 